So welcome to the first class of the Human-Computer Interaction course. Um, I am, for those of you that uh, don't know me yet, I see some familiar faces uh, around, um, but also some new faces. Uh, I am Luigi De Russis. I am the main teacher for this course, and with me uh, there also will be other two people. One is Alberto Mongero Farello, and the other one will be Tommaso Calò, that will follow mostly, or only, the lab hours of the course, while the in-class part will be mostly me. So I hope you are happy of this thing, uh, but it's the, the reality. So let me start with a disclaimer that is particularly true for this course. And that this year we try to, uh, to empower even more. So in this course, I'm not going to talk for one hour and a half straight in a class. But most of the classes, even the more theoretical one, will be as interactive as possible. Um, so differently in a way from web application or whatever language you, you follow it. Um, but there will be times in which I will ask you things. And these things will be sometimes just to icebreaker, like in a few minutes. And other time will actually be for getting more in-depth knowledge of some things that we will see in theory. And then, of course, we will have some practical exercise in class that you will do and then there will be more easy to have interaction and discussion and confrontation on topics. So this is the disclaimer. And with that in mind, um, don't look at the slides if you have them, because otherwise you, have see, you see the, the answer, probably, to the question I'm going to ask you. Um, and the things I'm going to ask you is this course is centered on one, let's say, entity, one thing, let me call it. And, and also the introduction will be followed as a structure that uh, same entity. So can you guess which is this entity, which is not something you typically meet uh, in uh, other courses so far or other courses in the future here at Politecnico? What could be this entity in a way? It will be a long class made in this way. <laughs> um, so idea, suggestion, answer. There is no, um, especially in this course, there is really a limited time, a limited number of time that the answer are wrong. Typically, the answer are maybe debatable um, or open to discussion, but rarely wrong. So please, don't be afraid. Uh, I will not remember who said what, by the way. So that could be another guarantee for you. Yes. Uh, the final product in the beginning, the problem Sort of, but not in this case. Because also other courses you think are maybe focused on the final product. We want like to be centered on, yes. Almost. Remove interaction, work on groups. To understand what user really wants. Like it's similar to using one word. So it's, you said one word that is sort of, he said groups, you said users. So a more general term for groups, users. User experience. One word. User experience is two words. Humans, people, whatever you want to call it, yes. So this course is also in the title of the course, right? So it's not, um, so this is a human, a person, whatever, um, that I found on, on the internet. So the course is centered, and it's something, if you reflect a little bit, something you don't meet in other courses, right? How many other courses you talk about people? 
You typically talk about technology, you talk about programming language, you talk about processes, but rarely, I'm right, you talk about people. And here is that people are one of the fundamental ingredient of the entire course and the work you will do during the course. So this isn't the course in general, we will get into details um, tomorrow. Starting from tomorrow, today we just focus on the introduction to the course because we have quite a lot of things to, to talk about. And so I structured the same introduction centered around people. So who could be the, again, if you look in the slide, there is the answer, but don't look. Who is the first, let's say, category of people we can talk about? In this room. Students. Students. Students, good. So that is you. And I'm going to ask you what are your expectations for this course. The second group of people, always in this room, this is course introduction, it's not topic introduction, just course introduction. The second group of people could be, we have four group of people. Yeah. Teachers. Teachers, yes, I don't think it's the second, probably, oh yes it is actually, I don't remember. Teachers, that is us. And I'm going to talk to you about goals and motivation for this course in a computer engineer and similar program. The last two. There's still two groups, one in the past and the other one is already in the slide. Older students, Older students. and we're going to, to have a look at the end of course questionnaire to see what we change based on that. And finally, if you put all this together, except all the students, what do you have here? You get students, you get me, all of us, all of us everybody here. And we're going to talk about how to, let's say, survive this course. All of us, teachers included. And so we're going to talk about the topic of the course, the organization of the course, and obviously the exam of the course. So this presentation will follow these four area starting from you. So you choose this course because this is an elective course and so which are your expectations for the course, what you hope to learn in this course? And that's a question for you. <laughs> Expectation. You choose this course because you like the title. Yes. <laughs> some more in-depth um, expectation or motivations, yes. Because of the UI, UX, more learning the interaction between developer and... So, user. yeah, you, you want to know more about the user experience and the user interface uh, to build them. Good. Any other expectation? At least three. I want to see at least, at least three expectations. One is done, two missing. So easy to use and um, applications are easy to use and usable and used in a way. Uh, so that is efficiently using them. One more at least, maybe from more back in the room. Well, two, go. Understanding what the user really wants uh, instead of what I think the user that is nice, uh, because one thing, so uh, what he said is understanding what the user really wants instead of what I think they, they want. This is good as an expectation. Um, we will discover that actually what the user wants is not something we should look at. We should understand what the user needs uh, more than what they want. That's the difference, and it's a um, specific difference for that. Last one. Uh, explore the process in which uh, you go through iterations to get uh, the thing that you actually want to do. Explore the process and go to the various iterations to build something uh, in the end that you have this goal in mind. 
Good. Any last minutes volunteer to speak? No? OK. So let's move from to, to me in this moment. So goals and motivation. Why a course like this centered on people on a computer engineer degree and data science engineering degree? Um, in part for the reason you said. So the goal of the course is, of course, understanding how to design the user experience, the applications, when interacting with modern application, device, and environment. And to do that, we are going to get in-depth knowledge of a process that will be human-centered, that will be people-centered to create such interactive system. Because if a system needs to be interactive and for people, then people cannot be excluded from the equation. And so we get the knowledge and we will learn how to apply it in practice. And you will apply it in practice for all the semester in a scaled down version. So instead of taking X month, we will take less, uh, less time and with less requirements as well, but that's the, pro the, the same process. And we also will become familiar with methods, especially at the beginning of the course, to gather and listen to user needs and knowing the difference between needs and wants. And, and also learning how to evaluate such systems. So not just building them and extracting the requirements in a way, but also evaluating how good we did in the entire process. So this is the goal. So why? Um, a course like this in, in the degree. So wh one thing is that um, what I already told you, how many times you have heard the, the people, person, seriously in any course you have done so far. Can you give a number? Once, which is more than zero. That have that bet. Other numbers, do you agree with one or zero? More than one? Someone offer more than one? No? OK. So that's why. Hmm? So we are teaching you, and you're learning how to build technology that sometimes is going to impact people, because maybe it's a mobile application, it's a web application, it's an algorithm that uses data that is generated by people and will be read by people. and we don't care about people, typically. So that's one motivation, of course. Um, the other motivation, well, it's more about maybe an attitude, like the first meme or the product feature here, and then the user, the, the cat need, uh, actually, uh, of the box instead of the multiple thing um, for, for playing. And to give you a more concrete example, and if we speak about developers, which you are not only, of course, um, this is a good example of why someone that program and learn to program and design system and application should um, actually think about user interfaces and users and people. Uh, what do you think of this picture? It's good, it's bad. You would be proud to build it and to distribute it out to the world or not. So yes or no? More yes or more no? No. 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 Okay. So what is this? Do you know what is this? Okay. This is actually an actual someone decided that he, he, this person was tired to use Vuget. You know Vuget, the terminal command? OK. That doesn't matter. It's a terminal command um, for getting information from the web, um, which is a terminal command. So as any terminal commands, it has options that you have to remember or look in the manual, but it's a no visual interface. And so this person who was a developer decided why not making a user interface out of it which is not a bad idea per se. So you don't have to remember the commands, etc. And this person decided to, well, take all the commands and put it in a user interface. 
essentially. And this is the result. And so this is something you, you could download and use it if you want. But this is a mess. Can we say a mess? Um, it has probably all the options that you need from Vuget, um, but, but also is not really usable in a sense. So for instance, uh, here you can accept or reject things uh, in where there is all, that you can select all, but you can also select all the others. So you can double select all. Um, and then you have a start to get at but and add to get to but and then empty, um, which is probably different from the other buttons. Um, and then no direction, force direction together with save, which is actually not the same thing. One is about directions, the other is saving, so it's totally different. And I don't want to know what happens when you press on pro mode, because there is a pro mode also here. So this is something that a developer left on his or her worst instinct uh, will create. And you understand that this is something you don't want to create. Maybe you have better mm, standards already from that, but who knows? Mm? So this is actually one motivation that brought us to, to propose this course in, 20, in 2019, um, actually, uh, for the first time, to also give perspective on how to create system and application that are not like this, and that are, as I was saying to her, usable, used, and easy to use, hmm? which are three characteristics we will meet again. So how we can design and create and build and develop such good interactive system, and we need these elements. We need an iterative and human-centered process. We are creating something for certain people, and so we need to talk with them. We need to understand them, first of all. Hmm? As he was saying, we are not, uh, I want to understand what people want and not what I think they want. Hmm? Um, we need people's needs, not wants. Uh, we need to keep in mind some principle and some guidelines for creating this stuff. It's not that there is no starting point and it's left to personal taste, but there are specific quantified guidelines and ideas on how to do some things, and we will see them uh, together with usability goals. And we will adopt prototyping as a way of proceeding. So we will try to prototype various elements at various fidelity level of accuracy to reach our goal, the process he was mentioning. And we will, you will need also evaluation. You need to evaluate what you did. Was good, was not good, how good was it or not. And of course, you also need programming at a certain point to actually develop hmm, such system and not just leave it on a piece of paper or a PowerPoint presentation. So let's move to the student of last year. So this is the questionnaire for 2023, uh, which was different from the previous year, the new format, and, and forced everybody to answer because it's before the exam. Um, so there was, of course, 93% of response. The course has a good satisfaction. I hope not to reduce it, but to increase it if possible. And also the satisfaction for the teachers is pretty good, I would say. Um, there was also like 15 comments, free comments, and most of them were black positive, which is nice, um, but not really useful to improve. Oh, well, useful to continue that direction. And there was like also these three mm, that are rephrased um, and in some cases merged uh, critiques from your colleague last year. There was also other critiques, but either they, are not, they were not understandable or they were suggesting things that we already were doing. So again, not really applicable. Uh, or was a comment I want to mention already um, that should not be a surprise that the comment was, oh, there is work to do for this course. 
And yes, there will be work to do for this course. It's not a course that you come here, listen, and then go out with the maximum score. You have to put some effort during the hours, in class, in the lab, and sometimes also after or before hmm, those hours. So there is work to be done. This is not a surprise and it's not here as a critique because it's something that I typically say every introductory lecture of this course. But the three critiques that we uh, considered in planning this year course are these three um, so that you, you know and you can also tell us in the end if this was take hold or not. So the first critique was, well, one critique was a better initial explanation of what is the final project. And for that, I edited these slides and we will do one hour dedicated to that this week. Um, someone was suggesting even more interactivity in class, especially for the practical parts. Um, we plan to do that. We remove some theoretical lecture to give more space for the practical parts and more guidance on the projects and during the lab. And this is something we can keep in mind and um, try to, to do, especially during the labs, but the uh, other changes for the practical parts and some moments in class for you to work outside of the labs should also help with this extra guidance together with this hour that was mentioning that we are going to do this week uh, on the project. Mm -hmm. So keep in mind these three critiques and let's see if we can do better this year. Um, so, everybody here, topics, organization, and exam. Mm -hmm. So how we can, again, survive, more than survive, until the end of the course. So what we will learn. Mm -hmm. So the idea is that, well, we will give an introduction to human-computer interaction this week. Then we will talk about problem framing and need finding. That especially need finding probably doesn't say a lot to you, but you can understand how it's composed as a word. Then we will talk about task and their analysis, prototyping, how we can prototype, the guideline, the principle, and the heuristics that are other guidelines for evaluating and creating user interfaces. Uh, we will talk then to visual design and design patterns, including things like colors, and their use or misuse. Then we will learn how to do a heuristic evaluation, that is an evaluation of a prototype using the heuristics we have seen before. And then we'll also learn how to do a usability testing, that is another kind of evaluation. So all of these in 14 weeks of the course. And this will follow the theoretical lectures and the more practical activities, including the labs. So this will be one corpus of activities. So talking about more mundane things, learning material, we have all the learning material on the website that you already have uh, in the email I sent to you, but here there is also the link. There you will find slide exercises, lab text, the full schedule at a certain point in a couple of weeks, templates, when you need templates to produce something, deadlines, because we will have deadlines, and any supplementary material. Um, this course, as you can notice, is video recorded and for classes only, specifically for lectures only, and the video recording will be on YouTube and in that playlist and on the Portale della Didattica as well, and all the material will also be uh, replicated in a GitHub repository in that organization. And in the same organization, you will also put the material for your group work. Because this course has, if you have missed it, group work to be done, a project to be done. So that project will be hosted the material on GitHub and each group will have a dedicated private repository to work on it and teachers will see the repository, but you will not see each other's repository. Only the group will see that repository. Mm -hmm. So, and all will be hosted in this uh, Polito minus HCI minus 2024 organization on GitHub. And if you have any question at a certain moment, just raise your hand and ask, okay? Um, communication, again, as you have seen from the, um, 
from the email, we will use Telegram, a Telegram group for communication among you, between you and the teachers and vice versa. Uh, here there is the link to join, the link is also in the email and on the website. So you have three places where to find the link. Uh, in the Telegram groups, there are two topics. One is called the news and updates. And as the name say, is for news and updates. Uh, so announcement, reminder, official information from the teachers. And the other topic is instead called the question and answer. And it would be for question and answer from you. Mm? So if you have any feedback, any question, just for us or for other your colleagues, just wrote there. Uh, private conversation can be done by direct message if needed and emails as an alternative as well for longer, slower and private conversation if you have any specific issue that you want to discuss longer than a telegram message. Slower means also slower in replying uh, than telegram, the telegram group. We are pretty quick, I would say in monitoring and replying to telegram messages. Um, so that is really for quick communication, uh, important and urgent things, uh, instead more maybe important and slower uh, discussion could be done via email. And if you have something you want to discuss, there is also this student hour um, that I schedule with not a lot of success typically but I, I still try. Um, so I set apart two hours per week. In this case, every Thursday, starting next week, not this week, uh, in my office uh, or on request, if needed, where you can talk about any of this thing written there. Hmm? So you have some specific issue in the project, in the course, in the group, and you want to discuss in person, you don't have time after a class, after a lab, that be one moment to sit down and talk about problems, if there are. Um, same things for clarify information and questions about the course. That's another good moment, in addition to the moments after classes. Well, maybe not on Monday. Maybe it's 7 p.m. we go home. Um, but also if you want to know more about certain topics, if you want to talk about thesis in general or in particular or whatever. Mm? So the idea is that you have, so now you have second year master students, but you have access if you want to teachers that have a little bit of knowledge and expertise. Um, and so you can use it mm, in this way if you want. So if you want every Thursday next week starting 2 p.m., 4 p.m., send a message beforehand because if nobody will come, I will not stay, sit for two hours doing nothing, of course. Um, and so that is one opportunity for you or on request or after classes, before classes, whenever the occasion uh, appear. So let's dive in a little bit about the course methodology. So the course methodology is both problem-based and project-based, which means that, as I mentioned before, you learn by doing a project that's project-based in teams. And it's also problem-based in the sense that we are not creating the problem for you for, to work on, not the problem in general. Uh, but the project work starts from real, not realistic, but real problems that people may have and people are not you and not me. Hmm? So it's not everybody, anyone in this room. Hmm? And it's what we call the need finding before. So we will start from specific problem, context, situation that happens in the world and you select which one. Of course, you go deep in that and then build a project upon, upon them. Hmm? Um, and here there is the first thing that creates trouble in students, that is um, the idea that when we talk about project, the first answer is typically, I want to do an app for, 
or I want to build something for, right? No? If I'm going to ask you, what do you want to work on a project on? What do you say to me, just randomly? Work on up. Work on up. Yes, Matt has already said that. Um, that is the first thing, and we will prohibit that for the first like four weeks. We are not talking about apps, programming, solutions for four weeks, and this is a huge pain for you, and also for us a little bit, because we, we need to interact with you, um, that we want to bring the solution and we, want, and we instead say no. The solution will come, but not now. Um, so this is something that will be painful and will bring discussions and you will come with ideas to us and we will say no. And you will not be happy to listen to a no, but you will have to deal with it and refine and propose something. We will not say no only, of course. We will say no and, and we will provide hopefully constructive suggestion. But this is something I already want to mention here because it's part of the problem-based uh, thing. Hmm? Oh, another thing that, that just came to my mind now is um, the third critique we received, if you remember, was about, just to explain, more guidance on projects during the labs. And this is one of the reasons why we had a close number for this course. Because last year we had 160 students doing projects. And we were three and the course is still six credits and this means that there were groups that waited for hours before talking with us because it's a lot of people and so we in addition to make all the other changes we also ask for a close number because likely this course always has grow during the year starting 2019 with 80 people last year was 160 uh, with new first timers and and in the years we try to also remove people like senior media engineer now has their own course before they choose that. But even with removing people, we still increase the number until it was not, like last year, possible to uh, follow all the groups with the care that is needed to successfully bring each group at the end of the exam, at the end of the course. So this is also another reason to, to take all, that we take all that uh, that critique. So there is a project, there is a problem starting for which we start. The project will be developed during the semester. So you will start next week working on the project. And it will be done step by step with assignments that will follow what we see and practice in class. And, and we will iterate on prototypes. We will do Two and a half different prototypes, levels, different fidelity of prototypes. And the project will be done mostly in the lab hours on Wednesday. And they will be within a given team. So each lab slot will have a different topic. And each group will be in one specific topic. Okay? And we'll need to work within that large topic to create to identify a problem and then build a solution. In addition to that, there will be checks. We will have five assignments. Two of them will have checks at the end. And these checks are just feedback. They are not graded. They are not evaluated. Just feedback for you. Uh, because if you make a disaster in assignment number one, then the disaster is kept until the end, and it's not possible to recover it. So giving you feedback after the main, more critical, especially the beginning assignment, we prevent the disaster. Or maybe the disaster will happen, but you will have time to fix it during the course, before the next assignment. And again, this is just pure feedback. No grading is involved in that specific moment. The grading will happen only at exam time. Um, so course organization, you know the schedule. We have class here in this wonderful hour. Um, 
one tomorrow before lunch, that is another wonderful time slot. And then we have three slots of the lab on Wednesday, um, starting from week two, uh, four group projects only, and with an exception. The exception is that this week we will do three hours of classes um, instead of the lab on Wednesday. Um, can you guess why? I think you can guess why if you think about the semester this year. Hmm? Well, there's nothing to do lab, but we can also like relax. It's not that we need to do the classes, right? In that hour, we say skip, skip four hour and a half. I will be happy, actually. Uh, you too, probably. Why we do this three extra hour now? Yes, to finish one week earlier. And that week, especially because this week is the, you know, you know how the semester go this year. You came back from Christmas holiday on Monday, this is still holiday, 6th of January, and then we will have a class on the 7th of January, and then a lab on the 8th, and then the, the semester is over on that Friday. So we do one hour and a half to skip that Tuesday class. So the course will end before Christmas except for the lab that will be working for the exam. So you probably will anyway work on the exam, either in the class or at home, but you will probably work on the class. And the other hour is actually to skip, um, well, it was two reasons. One, because we don't know, we, we needed one hour now. And the other thing is that we want to skip the last class before Christmas. So the, the Tuesday before Christmas, the 17th of December, we want to skip also that one. So we do this three extra hour now to finish the course by mid-December, basically, except for some labs for the hour that will be devoted for your group project for the exam. So it's nothing new to do in that moment. So that hopefully uh, will help and will help also to skip a problem we had last year. Last year we had, um, we had Panettone in a lab because we were like three people, like three students and me, four. Um, so, and the class before was not much more bigger. And so it doesn't really make sense for me to come here and speak with three people and have everybody else watching or not watching the video lectures. So we, can, we have this, uh, those hours, that class, and we can uh, arrange things in this way so that easily will be better for, for you also, if you need to, to travel somewhere in Italy or outside for the winter holiday. So three extra hours this class this week. This, the room that we have on Wednesday is smaller than this one, but hopefully we can fit it for, for this week only. Uh, it's smaller because it's for the lab, so it's for half of you, a little bit more than half of you, actually. Um, so classes. Classes are in person, in rooms with power outlets at the desk, in theory, there are power outlets, yes. Uh, lectures will be video recorded, as already said, and made available soon after each class. Maybe on Monday I will have dinner first and then we we'll publish the video, but you got the, the idea, soon after each class. They will not be streamed live. And this year we decided, in addition to the labs, that we are not recording the labs, of course, because the lab is group work, so it doesn't make sense to record the lab. We also will not record in-class exercise. So if in the schedule you see lecture, that will be recorded. If in the schedule you see exercise, that won't be recorded. For one specific reason, that is that in the exercise that we expanded this year, we want to expand this year, is where you really need to understand and participate. And if you stay home, watching a video for pair, a speed is not really the same thing than being here and participate and discuss and do the work in the moment and get feedback on what you do. And that feedback is also useful for the lab and for your work project. So what we have seen last year is that the people that most of the time join the exercise in the class then add easier time in the lab. And then easier time needs 
means also less feedback to be received, less negative feedback to be received, etc. And, and already said that this week we uh, have the lectures, lectures of video recorded on Wednesday at 1 p.m. for three hours in room 11i. Uh, instead, laboratories will start next week. Again, also that room should be all those three rooms, actually two rooms, should have power outlets at the desk. The labs are four group activities. We'll only group group activities in the lab and each lab sort of each couple of labs, it depends how long they are, will have an assignment text that will be published online some days in advance. We aim at one week in advance. We will see. Uh, laboratories. So laboratories are the critical part of this course. Much more critical than lecture and exercises. Because it's there work happens, in a way, so they are collaborative and interactive places to work and share feedback. So the in-person attendance is fundamental. So if you have to skip one class, don't choose the class of Wednesday. Skip Monday, skip Tuesday, but that one try not to skip it. Or at least have a large part of the group attending each lab. Mm -hmm. um, so each group, and then I will tell you how groups are composed, uh, will be in the same slot uh, and we work with the same teacher for the same semester for the entire semester within a specific topic mm -hmm. so group number one will be in slot number one and slot number one will be alberto monge as teacher and that will be for the entire semester so that group will be followed by alberto for the entire semester mm -hmm. and same for the other two slots um, you choose the preview. You choose the group composition and you choose the slot as a group you prefer. Because there will be overlaps with other classes and we cannot have the picture of all the uh, overlaps so you know if you are have another class or not in that moment and you can pick the best slot for you hmm, as a group. And one characteristic of these laboratories is that it's not a laboratory is like here is the text, work, ask me question, if you have. But it's really, especially in some of them, um, a collaborative effort in which we are there to support you, to help you reason, to help you produce something, not to ask, listen to your question if you don't understand something. So it should be really a team effort that includes the teachers in a way. So, in these labs, always keep in mind that the teacher is there to guide you and support you to the successfully completion of your project. We'll not do the work for you, but we'll help you do a better job. So talk with the teacher of your team uh, when you have the possibility. And in the lab hours, we will have two main activities. One is work on the assignment, work on the project, and the other one will be checks. And the checks, as I said before, they will happen in Wednesday time with some schedule, etc., and that will be a moment in which we stop at the end of the assignment and we'll give you feedback. Each teacher will give you feedback to the groups in this lot for the work they've done up to that moment. Uh, I told you that each lab has a team and all the project must fall in the slot team and specialize it in a way, and we will try to distribute teams among slot so that every slot has more or less the same number of groups mm, to avoid that slot number one has 15 groups and slot number two and three has five mm, because that will be unfair for the students in the first group. Mm. So the team for this year, and they are large, <coughs> and they are fixed in a specific moment, are these three. So the first in order of time is team is ultra one being. So project in the team will need to focus on things that happen within the health and will be domain. Specializing it because it's a large topic, of course. The second team is playful exploration of the world. And the third team is education with AI. Three teams, three teachers, let me say a little bit more, 
about those three teams. So team number one will be led by Alberto. And first lot on Wednesday, and it's probably the most easy to, to imagine, is the idea of the team is that each group will explore ways, innovative ways, to create application that empower individuals or group of people to lead healthier lives. That would mean whatever came to mind. Physical well-being, mental well-being, stress relief, better organization of timing to reduce stress, more time with friends, some work within this, and others that you can imagine, you will imagine, uh, within the health and well-being. Or it could be more on the medicine side, like a disease, treatment. We had course groups on diabetes in the past, for instance. So understanding the needs of people with diabetes and try to tackle a specific um, problem, let's say, that this, um, these people met in their daily life. This is team number one. Team number two is this playful exploration of the world in absence of a better title. And this will be my uh, slot. And the idea of the slot is still as large as health and well-being is that we are constantly in a way exploring the world, meaning that we visit new place because we go on holiday or we move to a new city or new country to study or to work and we get to know our neighborhood or we want to discover new monuments in the city or we go to some museum. So we are exploring the places around us, the world in this sense, the city, the buildings, the places we met. And so within this team, we will focus on better supporting people, some kind of people, not generic people, and we'll see how to identify those, exploring a little bit of the world in some scale and some environment. It could be buildings like a museum, it could be exploring a park, it could be exploring an old museum of the city, it could be finding new way to um, discover the history of a specific place or a specific monument, etc in a way that should be playful. So not, let's do Google Maps, because Google Maps is boring, right? So in a way that is more playful than just a navigator from one place to another. And so there will be need to have, in the solutions, there will be need to, need to have playful components, in a way. And this is team number two, Wednesday, 2.30 p.m., 4 p.m. And then team number three, is instead led by Tommaso, and the focus is on education. Mm? So the context is education, exactly as the context of the second team was uh, exploring the world, and exactly as the context of the first team was health and well-being. And as for the second team, we had the playful as a constraint for the solutions. Here we had with AI as a constraint for the solutions, so not for next week but something to keep in mind at a certain point you will need to consider some AI behavior, at least within your project. Mm -hmm. um, and this team is about education in multiple ways. Could be formal education, like this one we are doing here, or could be informal education, mm -hmm. like a course online, a video on YouTube, some self-learner, it could be something for students, it could be something for teachers, it could be university settings, it could be primary school settings, it could be outside of university settings, it could be uh, how to prepare for a in job interview. It could be something that relates to education and learning, and at a certain point, so to bring a, a more engaging, effective, and inclusive learning experience, at a certain point we will, you will imagine, some contribution of AI in that. Okay, so these are the three teams for this year. Uh, how big is a group? A group, by definition, is not made by one person, so don't ask. Um, it is a three or four people. Preferably four, uh, because it's fewer groups to handle, but three are fine. Um, so you can imagine if you, the answer to the question, can we do a group with two people? The answer is no, good. 
Uh, so three or four people, not two, not one, not five, three or four. Um, and uh, sorry, I, I said that not because like it never happened, right? That someone after say three, four groups, can we do a group with two? No, it's three or four. Okay, can we do five? No, three or four. So don't ask because the answer will be no. Uh, and without an end, it will be just no. Um, in this course, it's your responsibility to form teams. We don't want to be involved in team formation. Um, first, because it's, well, for two reasons. One, because it's a course about human-centered and learning to operate with people in a way. And so this is a good exercise in line with the course. And second, because we are not at the kindergarten and you are uh, grow up enough to be able to form a group on your own. Um, we can help if you need help, but well, we are not going to say you and you go together and form a team. We have no idea of doing something like that. Other courses do this with some algorithm, etc. We don't. We keep it more human-centered. That is, you work. You do the work of assigning groups. Uh, you choose the group formation. You choose the team you want to attend as a group. Uh, and teams cannot be changed during the semester. So you form a, a team now, and that will be until the end of the semester or until something happens, like people as an argument and the work, don't want to work together anymore, and then that's something we need to, to tackle. But teams cannot be changed during the semester as a general rule. And let me stress this out, that in case of issues among teammates, because they will happen, and they statistically happen at least for two or three groups every year, um, talk with us. I will not understand, I will never understand, maybe one day we'll understand why, even if I say talk with us, your colleagues don't talk, don't talk with us. So they had a problem with the group week two, and then they tried to solve it, and in week four, they didn't solve it, and the day of the exam, they would say, well, actually, we had a problem. It's a little bit late to solve the problem in that moment. Way easier to solve it in week four. So if you have a problem with some group, um, because your group is like that one, hmm? so one is working 99% of the time, and the other are just hanging around, they are, uh, they are nice to be with, but not really contributing, try to solve the problem within the group, because as said before, you are old enough to do that. But then if it's not solving the situation, talk with us, and we will intervene and talk with the party and find a solution in one way or another, okay? So in case of issue, three time, talk with us, the teacher of your team or me, in general, and we will figure out a way to solve the issues with the groups. Um, and I know that at the end in the exam, there will be one or two groups that will not follow this, but I have to say that. Uh, as I said before, each team will then work on their own GitHub repository, and we will create and assign a privacy repository at a certain point, not today, not this week, to each group before starting the work. So your goal for this week is to form a group and then select which topic you want to be in. And I will tell you in a second how to do this. But before, let's talk about the exam. Because this is how the course unfolds, right? We have the team, we have the projects, but it's not maybe much clear what is this project yet. So, the exam is composed by three parts. The first part is this project that I'm talking about to you. Mm? That is made in team, and you will have to deliver the prototype sources that you will produce during the course, and notice the source is in quote, because it's not code, o not always code sources, it will be other kind of sources. And then, as a group, you will also have to create a final report, a document, not slides, a document with sentences in English, grammarly correct, um, in which you will tell us, basically, what you did during the semester. So, 
if you keep some notes during the semester, you will be a easy for you to just put all, all the things together and read it. Um, for the four groups assignment, I told you before there are five assignments, four are group assignments, and it's this project that is 20 points uh, out of 30. Then there is one individual assignment. So you are not doing it as a group. You're doing it individually, and you are going to get some score, just you, not the rest of the group. And this individual assignment is the heuristic evaluation. Mm -hmm. Basically, each of you will evaluate another project at a certain point in time, mm -hmm. according to some rules that we will explain to you. And the quality of that evaluation is the individual report. They will give you up to six point. Um, and then there is the oral discussion at the exam. That will be other four points that is mandatory and must be done for the first time you try the exam at least with the entire group. Mm -hmm. uh, the project you will realize in the semester will remain valid until the end of the academic year, which means up to the session of exam of September included. So November 2025, uh, it's a new academic year, so none of these will, will be valid. You have to redo the course, basically. So hopefully you will not be in that position. And since 20 plus 6 plus 4 is 30, we have two additional points that we keep as teachers for the effort during the course, the project quality and creativity, and the quality of the oral discussion. What means project quality and creativity? Well, if you are, for instance, in the education group, and you end up doing a web application for Polytechnic students, that's really not creative enough, right? Because it's, it's too easy. If instead do something more, I don't know, an augmented reality prototype for primary school, that would be probably much more creative than something you do for your colleagues at Polytechnico. Mm -hmm. This is just two random example. I will explain better what the project needs to be in the end. Mm -hmm. um, Oh, yes, and we will provide a template for both reports. So the final report as a group and the individual report will be following some templates we will provide. Mm -hmm. So you will have a structure to follow and things to insert. And again, documents, not slides. Um, and we will re-talk about this, all of these in December, because I'm pretty sure that if I ask what I said in this slide tomorrow, a good part of you will not remember without looking. So we will re-talk about it closer in December before Christmas so that you have a fresh memory and more confident in what is a project because you already will be in a late stage of development of the project. Um, so the evaluation criteria for the project are this one. This one are also reported in the, um, in, in, in the course um, description online, so effort in the project activity, you are in the labs, you participate in the labs, you listen for feedback, you get feedback, you ask questions, or you just sleep all the time. Mm -hmm. Originality, complexity, richness of the work, methodological and technical correctness of the process you followed. Mm -hmm. We will teach you how to do things, and then if you do things randomly, that's not good. Uh, also, communication quality of the assignments and the reports, quality of the oral discussion and individual contribution within the team of people. Hmm? Project development. Any questions so far? Project development. So what is the project? Hmm? So the goal of the project development is to give you hands-on experience on one, human-centered design process that we will describe step by step by along the course and we will ask you to develop step by step along the course. Um, within a team, as already said, 
starting from a project that you will, the, from a problem that you will extract from this need finding phase that will become clearer tomorrow. Uh, group assignment represents the various steps of the projects. Group assignments start during a lab, they last one or two labs, and then in two cases, as I said before, there will be a check as feedback on what you said, but in any case, it will be evaluated only at the exam. So you can do a disaster in assignment number two, but you, if you are able to recover from the disaster, you should be fine. Hmm? And the feedback is there to help you recover, to recognize that there is something is wrong and recover. Hopefully not a disaster. Um, so what will be the assignment and the dates for the assignment? Assign assignment number one, that is a group-based assignment, is this need finding. That is a way in which we will extract these needs. Um, start at week two, so next week, and at week four with the check. So you have two weeks to work on that assignment, and then the, after the third week hmm, will be the check on what you did as a group. Uh, assignment two is store, um, storyboard and the first prototype you will develop that is a low fidelity prototype that started week five, so after the check, and last two weeks, and there's a feedback session at the end of it. That will be a prototype of a solution, a prototype of something, of a product. It will be the first level of prototyping. Then we will have assignment three, that is the individual one, that is the heuristic evaluation on another group low fidelity prototype. Mm -hmm. So on another group project, basically, what they did up to, now, up to that moment. And this uh, uh, heuristic evaluation needs to be done during the lab hour. So while the others, you can also work on your own, this assignment needs to be done during the class, during the labs of these two weeks, weeks eight and nine. There is no feedback because it's an individual assignment. If we give you also feedback, we also get the score to ourselves. And the results of these is actually something you pass to the group you evaluated for giving them feedback. So it's you acting as person that gives feedback to the other group to improve their project. Assignment four is small assignment, one week, medium to high fidelity prototype. So we move one step farther in the prototyping phase, start week 10, and week 11, there is no checks. And this is just a bridge to assignment five, that is the last assignment that needs to be produced one week each before each exam date. And start at week 11. So we'll have week 11, 12, 13, 14, to just work on this assignment and then all the time you want until the date the group decide to take the exam. So let me make clear because sometimes there is no clar clarity in this. One week before each exam date means that if you decide to give the exam in February, let's say 15 of February, you have to have everything ready seven days before. So the 8th of February just random numbers. If you decide as a group, and it's up to you, to give the exam in September, you will have from week 11 to September to work on that assignment. And the work will need to be ready seven days before the official date in September. So it's seven days before the official date of the exam on the Portale for the date you as a group decide to present on it, okay? So these are the five assignments, yes. Uh, about the assignment three, um, us, like, are we gonna you know, uh, give feedback within the same team? Um, we, yes. Um, we will try to figure out the logistics of this because last year worked well, but it was a little bit messy. Um, so with, with this year, we want to replicate the it worked well, but avoiding the messy part. And this year is two weeks. Last year was one week, so it's longer. But the idea is that, yes, within the team, you give feedback to another group within your team. 
in that hour and a half of the lab because we changed rooms. Otherwise, we could have also done 44 hours and a half. Yes. But this will, will be clearer as soon as we appro approach the date. Uh, and this is just a summary, just for you, uh, for when these things happen. And you see there is checks in two of them. And we will publish the first assignment already this week so that you can read them, read it, even if you don't maybe understand entirely what's about. Um, so what's the project? As I told you, we will then dedicate one hour on Wednesday on this. But the project, as I said to you, you start from a, pro from a problem. I want to understand, let's make an example. I want to understand how students um, study close to exam. That's my statement, the context I want, and which, as a group, I want to work it. That's the starting point. You will do some need finding to extract the need, and you maybe discover that um, students don't study, uh, so there is no need, good. Or that um, student has actually trouble in the finding concentration. Or maybe a need is to find a place where to be quiet, because Polytechnico is too crowded and the home is not the same. And, or maybe they need study pairs. So you find some needs, and then you focus on one of these needs. And on top of them, you build your product, you build the solution. So let's say that the need identify is helping students finding um, quiet space around the city, just a random example, and then you start creating, prototyping, low fidelity, an application, maybe mobile application, maybe desktop application, you will decide. Um, perché è morto. Um, <laughs> Sorry, it's died. Too many microphones. No, we are not uh, um, lucky. Um, I'm sorry. I will scream a little bit, try to be quiet and listen. So you will develop, <clears throat> um, let's say, a prototype, a mobile application, let's imagine, or an augmented reality application, whatever, in low fidelity to solve this problem that you identified, that is finding places. And so you go around with the city, you see, oh, this is an empty, uh, a quiet space, this is a, a noisy space, etc. And you will develop a low fidelity prototypes. That means on paper, on actually piece of paper. So really low fidelity. You can do everything on paper, right? Then you will move uh, to medium fidelity. So it's computer. Still, you can do almost everything. And then the high fidelity prototype is the prototype in code. So if you, at the beginning, decide, oh, I want to do an augmented reality application for getting around the city and discover this quiet place, you will need to do it at a certain extent for the final prototype. So you will likely need to learn something about augmented reality if you decided in week three or four that your project will be augmented reality. Hmm? So that technology, you will decide at a certain point, you will bring it with you. And the screens you decide, the information you decide to put on the low fidelity prototype, that will bring with you until the end. Mm? So that's why also there is feedback for us to avoid that you try to do too complex things or vice versa, too simple things. Okay? But then, even in code, the final results, the final prototype, the high fidelity prototype, it's still not a product. It's still not the final thing. It's not something that should work 
100% because everybody is going to test it like a web application one project like like this is not like this hmm? it is a prototype so there will not have implement for instance standard yet important features so the prototype won't have for instance a sign up process or a sign in process it's a prototype you start with your user or your couple of users it depends already sign in with all the information in place ready to work ready to operate so there are simplification on that and there will be also some difficult or standard feature that can be faked or are coded hmm? so for instance two years ago we had a, a group of students that wanted to do something augmented reality with an ipad and they, they implement something in augmented reality, uh, but they, it was like a tool for teachers, uh, for students to ca learn count, mathematical operations. And they, uh, through the tablet, see a surface and can put objects in this surface. And they had like four kind of objects, not a library of hundreds like you can imagine in a final product, just four that work in one specific case that is their own case and if you um, show to the iPad the table you can put object on the table it's in a realistic way but if you put it on um, the ceiling that will put object midair and clearly that is not good for that project because they should have been grounded on a table only on a table to be able to be counted but since it's a prototype and since they control it until the end the process they just show it on a table they never do like this showing the ceiling to the project but they look for a table so they had to implement something about augmented reality building models in 3d for these three four objects they needed and build up story let's say on what the application can do and cannot do but then difficult parts like be sure that the object are attached to that surface and if you move the object doesn't move etc that is totally skipped because it's a prototype it's not a final product mm -hmm. so two things to keep in mind when you will proceed with solution we will not speak ab about solution for weeks but when you will keep in mind that the seizure you keep with the low fidelity prototype you will give we you will take it until the end and then something in the final project project in the final prototype will can be are coded can be fake can be limited in number hmm? the ai algorithm will not be there in most cases the project with education with ai will fake it uh, ai behavior that given an uh, let's say a sentence will provide always the same intelligent answer it's a simulation of an intelligent behavior it's not the actual algorithm running and then if you want you can also attach the algorithm but it's not required okay so keep this in mind the project completion level is the one of a prototype that has some feature to prove your point and will have some part missing some part limited and some part faked and some part are coded okay we will of course dedicate one lecture to low fidelity prototype one to mid fidelity and one lecture to high fidelity prototype including which technology you can use each group can use for building hmm, the project so you are not alone in this um, quick word on the oral discussion the oral discussion is all teammates present and presenting at least the first time you attend the exam each group will have 30 minutes to give a brief introduction to the project no slides just an introduction vocally a couple of minutes do a demonstration of the implemented prototype so the last one only uh, and answer to question from us and we will cover it the demonstration is typically the most critical part you have to prepare it and we will already have read the reports you deliver and we 
also could have a look at the prototype code so you don't need to cover any of this part. Just a brief introduction and then go with the demonstration of, the, of your project, the high fidelity prototype. Um, we have one assignment zero for you, as you can imagine. Uh, by October the 1st, that is next Tuesday, you have to fill out this form, one person per group, and the form is about group composition. So you list three or four uh, information of people, ID, student ID, surname, name, GitHub username, and email, whatever email you want, GitHub username, someone, a username that you use. You don't need to create one on purpose for this course. And you have to indicate two preferred lab slot or teams. So you can select the first preference and the second preference. And according to your preference, we will allocate everybody in a specific team following either the first preference or the second one. This is to be done October 1st. All the deadlines we have in this course are end of the day. So 11, 59 p.m. that day. Hmm? So you have until October, almost 11, 59 p.m. October 1st. We will do the group assignment in the slot in the morning on October the 2nd so that you can go to the right slot that day because October the 2nd is actually Wednesday. Hmm? So you have until the very last moment to submit your group composition. And there are also some, very quickly, suggested books, they are not mandatory. They are suggested, meaning that they are good books. Uh, and we create most of the materials starting from those. So if you happen to find them somewhere, um, you can keep a copy. Uh, this first is, they are quite old. This first one is 24, 2004, so it's 20 years ago. Uh, this is 2016, a little bit more recent. And these are other two books, again, suggested, not required. The first, the first two are the one that we get most information, pictures, etc., for the slides. These two are a little bit less. And there are other two books uh, that are more reading, uh, they're not academic books like the, four, the other four one. Um, the design of everyday things that in Italian, and I'm sorry for the English people, but in Italian it's particularly nice. It's called uh, La Caffettiera del Masochista uh, because you see the coffee maker. Can you use that coffee maker? Yes, you can use it. You will also burn yourself, always. Mm? So in Italian they translate to to represent the operation. And this is about the design of everyday things. Uh, so that coffee, make, coffee pot is usable. You can use it, actually. Uh, but you cannot use it without burning yourself with art coffee or art tea. And the other one is a book more on the website, but website, but also used for mobile. Usability that is don't make me think that it will be a sort of thing that we will keep, need to keep in mind. Don't, we don't want the user to think too much on what they have to do. The interface should be intuitive enough to support their operation without having them asking, oh, I need to do this or that or whatever. Mm -hmm. So these are more uh, light books, not academic book, not textbook. Uh, the Don't Make Me Think is actually uh, also comics in it. So it's very, and they are thin. Um, the Design of the Things is instead more a psychological book written by Don Norman that we will find other time in the uh, course of the course. With that, six minutes before seven, we can close the lecture. We will meet tomorrow upstairs um, for the first class about HCI, about introduction to HCI. And then on Wednesday, we will start talking about need finding and a little bit more about projects and teams. Okay, and with that, 
Have a good evening and night, and see you tomorrow.